Now, what about for someone who is way back in your journey, beginning in entrepreneurship? What are some things you wish you knew in the very, very beginning? In the very beginning, the biggest obstacles I faced were self-doubt, like the imposter syndrome, feeling like a fraud, feeling like I'm too young, like people feel like I'm too young or I'm too old to do this, or I'm too this skin color, or I'm too that skin color, or I'm too this nationality or that culture or that religion or that, all the things, all the excuses and reasons that come up for why I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy and I'm not qualified to do something or be something or show up or share my message or write a book or whatever it may be that's your idea and that's where i face the biggest challenges so if someone is in that place questioning whether they're even yeah good enough or worthy to do something or be someone that they dream of being then this is your permission slip this is your yes you are good enough Yes, you are worthy. And yes, the world needs you and the word world needs your light. Entrepreneurs, I'm excited to bring on an international best-selling author, YouTuber, and a business guru. She has her own brand for being a guru and does things a bit differently, which we'll learn all about. She has a spiritual business coaching platform that helps business leaders achieve their financial goals while being their true, authentic selves. It is good to see you. Welcome this time to That Entrepreneur Show. Thank you, Vincent, for having me. It's a pleasure. Everyone, once you hear her story, you're going to want to learn more about her books. I will have the Writing with Authors link in the bio for you to learn more there. She does a lot of great work, not just having one book, but two books. She offers practical strategies throughout. A little something I like to do here on That Entrepreneur Show is have the show in three phases. Some listeners may skip ahead each week, but I hope they listen all the way through. We go what led you to entrepreneurship in the beginning. We catch up about present day. Then we look into the future, get more advice for our entrepreneurs. So let's get this started. Before we talk about how a writing has supplemented your work, what led you to found your company? I grew up in India and I was in a boarding school, in a residential school, in my elementary school uh, time frame. And it was called a Gurukulam. And this is an ancient Indian traditional educational system that was always um, followed until the British came and colonized India. Um, and then the entire education system was changed. So I learned from a real live guru in India, in the Gurukulam, about the holistic approach to education and leadership development and um the school actually was designed to create children into uh, world leaders who are literally um, here to make a difference in the world through their work. And so I had this foundation from a very young age. And when I was in the corporate, after my engineering, I went and got a job in the corporate world, just like most of us do. I started feeling like I was successful in my career and my job, and I had a good job with a good package and everything, but I started feeling these, uh, like I had golden handcuffs, and the cubicle wasn't really the place for me to be in, and there's something more for me to be doing in the world. I didn't know exactly what that would be, and that's where I jumped into my entrepreneurial journey, and Eventually, the Gurukulam and that foundation from my childhood came full circle where I realized that what I'm really here to do in the world is to grow up and be an example of, of how not only me, but everyone here has an inner genius, that magnificence within us that's already there. We're already born with it. 
And we're here to bring that out in a unique way into the world. And when we do that, I think that we turn into being an inspiration for others and also a guru for the world as an, a leader who's also an example that people can uh, role model after. And so that's where the brand of the guru was born from. Thank so, you for sharing this. This is exciting. Now I'm going to dive into your expertise. Say there is a listener or viewer out there who has speaking challenges. We don't know what the root of it is. What are some beginner tips, generalized, of course, that you can offer this person to get started on their road to speaking greatness? There is the skill part of anything that we do. And the skill part actually is totally learnable. So we can learn any skill by just learning from experts, to reading books or watching. There's so many ways to learn um, these days and then practicing the skill. And the more we practice, the more, the better we get. So this, the learning the skill part is one aspect of anything, be, getting good at anything. The other part is that confidence, that inner motivation that actually has to come from within and it's not something that can be forced from outside or from somewhere else or somebody else saying um, that you should do this. So if you are feeling challenged with speaking or public speaking or just showing up in general on any kind of platform, pay attention to both aspects and look at on a scale of one to 10, where is your confidence level, your inner motivation level is. And if that's at a one or two, or, you know, then you, that's where you need to focus more and tap into your inner self more there to raise that. And if that's a high rating, but the skill level is low on a scale of one to 10, then definitely dive into lots of ways to learn. And this is a great platform where Vincent like, you know, is showing how to do that. So learn the skill, practice the skill, and you'll just master it as you do more of it. Thank you for sharing that. Everyone out there, stick around for the whole show. There will be more tips throughout. I also want to dive into how you spread yourself not just in one area in entrepreneurship, you do a lot, including a family business that now it's been your turn in line to take over. Let's discuss that a little bit. Yes, yes, I am the third generation in the family business that's been around for 60 years globally. And um, it's, it, it is definitely a lot. And I, um, I have created... Um, theme days and like different containers, different um, boundaries for myself, where when I'm focusing on the family business, certain aspects, then we're, I'm only focused on that. And then when I switch, then I switch to like, I'm doing the interview here right now. So I'm not thinking about the family business right now, except we're just talking about it. Yep. yep shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> no, but I'm not, I'm, my mind isn't trying to solve problems in that box because that's, that's, there's a different time set aside for that. So um, also I have an amazing team that I have built that shares the, the vision and the core values that we've established for the company. And so while I am sitting here right now, there are um, all these other people doing things and solving problems in those areas that need attention. And so I don't need to be in all the places at all times. And that's something that uh, is built and established over time, but it's totally worth it. Um, and that every entrepreneur has to learn to let go of control over everything and have a team or a support system to help them, um, which is what I do. As I well. think we spoke about this on the, our last conversation. I resonate with that as now my team is getting built out. And I want to circle back to what you said about spending time on certain tasks that is all around time management, maybe time blocking. What are some tips or hacks that you use in your day to manage this time effectively? 
Yes, so it's it's a constant evolution of my time management, time blocking, project management, calendar management, whatever. Um, and our, um, at this point, I actually think of it as energy management. I'm actually more and more in touch with my energy in every any given moment. And if my energy is like, yeah, let's do this, go, like I want to check off a few things off, you know, a uh, few to do's right now. I just go into it and I just get a bunch of stuff done. Um, and then I feel good, uh, like very productive. And then sometimes I just, my energy is telling me I need to actually, I'm getting burned out. I need to actually step back. I need to go sit on my hammock and like just rest my mind, rest my body, maybe go eat something, nourish myself have some water, whatever um, my energy is feeling like, I manage my um, to-dos based on that because I'm naturally very driven and very ambitious. So I can go into burnout and overdrive if I don't pay attention to that call for my body. But that is the main tip I would give. If people are watching this, I bet they're more, more likely to be like me, driven and ambitious. And um, so that uh, paying attention to your energy can really help. I love that as I'm putting here in the show notes, paying attention to your energy. It's so important. I can relate to that as well. Even on top loaded weeks, my weeks tend to be the busiest Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. As a, for podcast clients, they come out on Fridays. So I could certainly relate to having to step back in certain times or doing different type of activities that don't drain me as much. It's been a great episode so far, and we previewed them a bit. The books, we got an author here. She's on Writing with Authors. Again, in the show description after this show, check out her awesome testimonial there. That's in video. I'd love to talk about what led you to your first book, and then we'll dive into what it's all about. Yeah, so my first book, Inner Genius After Guru, it is similar to the story of how I founded the brand of the guru. Um, the message of how to, I kept getting this question of, um, I have this passion and I really love doing X, Y, Z, but I can't really make money doing it. So I have to have this other way of making money or then I don't have enough time to do my passion. And it's just like, either or and there's this world of either or and um i decided that coaching teaching writing like learning i'm a avid student and all of this i just love this is my passion and sharing with the world and so how do i make my passion my business so that i'm retired for life because i'm a uh, people say they you, you have to work hard and do what you don't love for long enough so you can have enough money to then retire. And then what? Do what you love. Well, I want to just do what I love right now and still make money and still have a great lifestyle and freedom and enjoy that. So how do how do I do that? And how does anyone do that? So I did it for myself. And then I put the exact step-by-step -step process of how to turn your profit, uh, your passion into your profitable business um, in a way that creates financial and a lifestyle freedom for you without burnout. So that's what the first book, that's what led to the first book. And that's what it's about. Yes. And she's got... Big ambitions, as you noticed in the show, the book doesn't stop there. We have the next part of the book series. Both guru books, are they related in any way? Are they independent in the series or describe that for our audience? They are independent. They aren't. It's not like you have to read the first one to get the second one. They are independent in that way. Um, they are part of a guru's business guru series because they are both connected in the essence of them. And they're both for business leaders and entrepreneurs and um, just family uh, members who are who like family and their personal uh, fulfillment is also important to them. So there are some common themes in the two books, but they're independent as well. 
did you always have the plan to write two or did the second one birth after number one? The second one birthed after the first, but I had a feeling that I will probably have multiple books that will come out there. Like I say that I see my books as my babies. They are a labor of love and um, they'll, they're my part of my legacy in the world. Can we get a preview too? Or if there is book three, what to expect? <laughs> my intuition says they, that the third book, book will probably dive deeper into relationships, especially uh, partnerships, marriage, and how that like dive deeper into how that dynamic plays out in, in the context of a high ambition career or a business um, life. So this is the first time I've said this out here, but manifest it. Yeah. Yeah. And are these paperbacks, hardcovers, audiobooks? How can people support your books? They are pa paperbacks and ebooks. So I have digital versions, um, and there's Kindle versions on the on Amazon and paperback. And from my website, someone can get an author signed copy where I can sign a personalized message for them. I love doing that. That's for amazing. Um, with the books, you've done some podcast experience now, too. You've done some guesting. You've talked about your book. What do you like more? What do you like most about, I should say, about writing a book? What was your biggest, one of your biggest enjoyments out of the process? Hmm. I think the content of the books, it, it's literally channeled through me and... It surprised me more than anyone else because I'm like, did I just say that? Like, wait, wait, who, did, who wrote that? There's literally divine messages in the book. Um, and it's explained in a way that is very unique. And so just the process of channeling those messages and then reading it, you know, when I open it and look at it today, even, I feel like, wow, wow, like it's, it's, an aha moment for me too. I, I really feel like I wrote the books for myself before anybody else. Um, and they're here to remind me of um, things in times when I need something too. So yeah, just those aha moments are definitely my favorite part of it. Um, the other favorite part is sharing them with the world through these podcast. I'm doing a book signing event at a Barnes and Nobles location here locally Very in cool. San Diego this Saturday. So that, that'll be an in-person book signing. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about that and sharing the books with my family. There isn't anyone else in my um, all sides of my family who's been an author. So me being that. that is, that's very cool. Thank you. So being a trailblazer and seeing other family members um, inspired um, is also rewarding in this journey. Of course, it's always nice to share your accomplishments or what's the point? You don't want to do it alone, experience it alone. We've learned about your books. We've learned about the businesses. We've learned a little more about you. What are some things we haven't learned yet about your business? Who is your ideal client? Who can you help the most? Yeah, a family, um, leaders of family led and family owned businesses yeah. um, who have a lot of family dynamics, maybe generational differences, maybe there's a succession plan that's needed, but there's a lot of challenges that are um, coming up for that. Um, that's the person that I can most help. Um, that's what the second book is about, but the first book also is um, helpful there. So both the books are for that person. And that is the person that I can help the most because I've not only helped my father and my family through all of those challenges, but I've been a part of it firsthand myself and seen what the challenges are. And, and still every single day I'm working with family members and things come up. So tackling all of that, which I laid out in the book, 
And the book can only hold so much. There's so much more that we go into when I work with a client one-on-one -on -one or their team on a consulting um, basis or, or whatever, whatnot. So that is what I'm truly passionate about helping people with. Um, not only it creates the succession plan for the business and a strategy for long-term business success, but it also creates harmony and unity in the family which creates a long lasting family legacy. And that's a win-win across the board. I love your passion behind what you do and I can't wait to see everything continue to evolve now that we are connected. I wanna move more into the general entrepreneur space now, just in case not everybody is in your space. You're at the point now where you're scaling your companies, it seems, with your family business, you're continuing to grow. What advice do you have for someone who's also in your shoes, just getting started in this next phase of entrepreneurship? Some things you wish you knew maybe when you were entering this next phase. Yes, yes. Scaling. Everyone wants growth. Usually we all want growth and uh, scaling is growth. And uh, a couple things that I wish I knew that are important to know when you're in that phase of growth and scaling. Um, one is uh, more of an inner world, inner world thing. Um, and that's, um, it's your um, existing comfort zone. And we all have an existing comfort zone. And when we need to go beyond that, for the growth to happen, sometimes our subconscious mind can start to freak out and be like, no, 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 that's uncharted territory, that's unknown. Let's not go there, that may not be safe. And this can come up a lot and show up in a lot of different ways, um, but becoming really aware of what is my current comfort zone and if the growth is outside of that, then, um, slowly getting comfortable with an expanded comfort zone and expanding the comfort zone, as I call it, that process is really, really important. If not, I've seen people um, work really, really hard for the growth to achieve that scaling only to like retract back when something unexpected happens or something goes um something feels weird, to, feels scary to them. So expanding that comfort zone is extremely important from the inner world perspective. And the other part is the outer world perspective where um, scaling growth, like achieving the next level requires a next level of team, infrastructure, systems, processes, um, financial planning, um, all sorts of support systems that are absolutely required to not only achieve the growth, but like really sustain it and stay and then keep scaling further. And so looking at all of the current systems, processes and the team members org chart and then reevaluating what does it need to look like for the next level that we're looking to get to and what, how do we get from here to there and creating a, that um, growth plan or transition plan um, that can be difficult for some people because they're attached to the current uh, the way things work but it is important to look at that as well so those are some things definitely to keep in mind Bunch of great points there. Thank you for sharing that. I wrote down here when you're speaking the uncharted territory. I can relate to before I started experiencing any growth, I knew I had to do certain tasks, but I would dance around doing them and I would just do other mundane tasks like edit a podcast or something. And then now with building the team, you can't be working in the business and on the business as we always talk about now. I wear one of the hats in the company. I'm just wearing one of the roles. Otherwise, I'll never be able to grow, reflect on it. All those, all those amazing points. Now, what about for someone who is way back in your journey, beginning in entrepreneurship? What are some things you wish you knew in the very, very beginning? In the very beginning, the biggest obstacles I faced were self-doubt, like 
the imposter syndrome, feeling like a fraud, feeling like I'm too young, like people feel like I'm too young or I'm too old to do this, or I'm too this skin color, or I'm too that skin color, or I'm too this nationality or that culture or that religion or that, all the things, all the excuses and reasons that come up for why I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy and I'm not qualified to do something or be something or show up or share my message or write a book or whatever it may be that's your idea and that's where i face the biggest challenges so if someone is in that place questioning whether they're even yeah good enough or worthy to do something or be someone that they dream of being then this is your permission slip this is your yes you are good enough Yes, you are worthy. And yes, the world needs you and the word world needs your light. And so my first book goes deep into how to overcome all those obstacles because I share my story of how I went through all of those stages and how I overcame them. So my first book has all of those stories in it. Definitely um, check that. But um, that's what I would say is you are worthy and the world needs your light to show up and shine. Right? I love that. And the world needs your light, of course. It's been a pleasure to get to know you over the few interviews we've had. And again, one of the cool parts of podcasting is if you stay consistent and you keep your shows going, people do reach out to you and then you can forge these connections that you never would have had. I enjoyed learning all about the business, the books, everything in between. I hope you keep in touch with me when that, not if, when that third book comes out, we'll bring you back on writing with authors. But until then, my last question for you before we sign off, get her contact info as if you can choose any entrepreneur, it could be dead or alive, and it could be at any point of your business journey, who would you choose to learn from in the moments you need and why? I, I knew this question was coming because I watched the other episodes <laughs> or heard, and I thought, I thought about it and there are so many, but for this, for the purposes of today, I would say Oprah Winfrey. She Love was it. the inspiration in my beginning part when I was in the self-doubt. She, um, her message of you are worthy and the world needs you definitely um, made a huge difference for me. And so I'd say Oprah. I love her story because her first radio job essentially said like, no, you're not good enough. Like we were talking about and talk about flipping the script, arguably the most successful woman on the planet, right? She's yeah. Yeah. up there and I'm she's sure. just, she's an inspiration to pretty much everyone out there, man or woman, just the way she mm -hmm. continues to evolve. I'll even give a quick shout out to someone I just interviewed for a mental health break, Mr. Dave Israel, he was in jail and then created this company and sent it to Oprah, the popcorn they made in jail. And Oprah oh. loved it so much, she started buying cases and cases and cases of the popcorn and featured him in, in something on the website or the newsletter. So love Oprah, can't argue with that. And I can't argue with all the value you brought to the show. I'm grateful that you came on and spent one more session with me everyone again if you are intrigued by her books link is in the show description go check it out but where can we find you online otherwise than that episode yep my name if you google it you'll find my website it's www.avdi.guru and both my books are listed on there my youtube channel is on there with lots more value well um lots more business tips and strategies and i'm on social media on facebook instagram linkedin so or yeah definitely subscribe to my youtube channel so i'm i'm everywhere and on amazon for the books as well well thank you for sharing and everyone be sure to give her a follow check her out online look at her website she is dedicated to putting out tip after tip and i can't wait to see how it evolves be sure to subscribe to the show if you enjoyed the episode. That Entrepreneur Show is on all podcast platforms, all social media platforms. I am at Vincent A. Lancy on the same, and my website is vincentalancy.com. To learn more about our show sponsor and get started in podcasting, head to comingalivepodcastproduction.com 
or the link in bio. But today we're signing off my afternoon, finishing up her midday coming from Florida all the way out to California. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much for having me.